it's really ice racing to me has got to be one of the most like real raw fun driving the fun type of driving that i've ever done i don't know just put me on a lake for a whole day and just let me keep doing laps i'll have more fun doing that than on any road course or any autocross or whatever just sliding a car like with studded tires around on the ice i could just do that for hours just the, i don't know very just pure raw driving I'm Andy Smedegard. I am part of Central Wisconsin Sports Car Club, and we host a lot of ice races uh, throughout the winter months in Wisconsin. Uh, ice racing takes place typically between the months of January to February, uh, as long as the ice is thick enough uh, and we're able to plow a track on the lake. So we usually shoot for about 12 inches or so of ice, of good solid ice, and then um, yeah, just try to plow the track. Sometimes snow plays a factor into that. Trying to move, you know, two feet of snow on ice is not always easy, but. We do it as, as often as we can, as, as long as the ice is safe. The benefit of ice racing, it teaches drivers how to get comfortable with a car sliding around. Um, and, and that's something a lot of people don't think is beneficial until they're in a slide around, you know, turn 12 at Road Atlanta. And they're in a panic because they've really not been in this situation before. Uh, but ice racers, I mean, they're, they're comfortable with a car on a slide. That's, that's what we do when we ice race. The car's always kind of sliding around. So uh, it's just teaching drivers how to kind of become a better driver where they exceed that limit of grip. So a lot of drivers, you know, they're leaving time on the table, not actually reaching that limit of grip as often. But uh, an ice racer is fine tuning his driving right on the over limit, under limit. I mean, he's just getting everything out of the car that they can. So making studded tires. So you drill a bunch of holes through all your tires. Then you would take this inch and a half, uh, five sixteenths bolt. This is a snowmobile stud sharpener. Come down and it would make that into a nice fine tip. Butyl adhesive, which is just a windshield adhesive. We would coat that all in here before pushing it through the tire, just to help kind of seal things up. Then a nylon locking nut. You run that in and impact that in while someone's holding it from the backside. And you do that about uh, 1,500 more times, and you've got yourself a set of stud tires. Have fun. Everyone's trying to get faster and faster and faster, so everyone's trying to make the next best studded tire. Longer bolts, uh, started using brand new tires, sharpening the bolts, so like this evolution that happened with our studded tires was driven from competition. And it did get to a point where I think we, we had to start limiting the studs because it got too fast, like dangerously fast. And as you can see today, I mean, this, this thing, on, it, it can get dangerous, especially when the snow banks are that big and that hard. Uh, typically, we don't have this much snow and you can go out there and you can get the cars sideways as you want and you could screw up and you're really not gonna do anything. You're gonna run into maybe a little bit more snow or slide another 100 feet off track. Um, but that's it. So it's 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 very safe ice racing, um, and that's why I encourage people to do ice racing because it is usually a safer place to learn the limit of you know sliding a car around versus at a big track where you could actually hit a wall. It is a little slower speeds, especially on the the rubber, the snow tire cars. But once you add studs, it's things are happening very fast. I built these probably six years ago, and over time they start leaking worse and worse. Um, and I am going to make a last attempt to try to <laughs> stop them from leaking by using some stop leak. They'll tend to leak after drilling that many holes through them. After you get many seasons on them and these bolts start wiggling around a bunch, they'll start leaking everywhere. And I have one that will maybe lose a pound every minute, so you have to like fill them up and go do a bunch of runs and then come back and fill them up again. So it's kind of an experiment to see if this works. People have tried stuff like this before, rubber cement, and it never seems to work. The problem is it has to stay pliable. You can't, it can't dry and then um, some of the stuff, once it dries, it gets hard. And then when you start to, when the tire starts to move, it just turns to a dust or flakes off or something. So ice racing really shouldn't be hard on cars. You're really not gonna chew through tires that much. 
the, the only thing it's really hard on is bumpers and stuff. You know, if you if you plan on going off track and hitting a big snowbank or something, you might crack a bumper here or there, but there's very little wear. Um, it's a cheap form of racing. You, know, you can go do a event for 30 bucks. And these tracks are, they can be pretty big tracks. It's miniature road courses, so. Ice racing that really hasn't gained like big exposure, popularity kind of stuff. So, I mean, these, these events are happening all over the place. Uh, there's, there's like three or four clubs in Wisconsin area that host these types of events. And most people really don't know about it or don't, don't really go to events. Some of these clubs are only getting like 10, 15, 20 people at their events. And it's crazy to me, like it's, those are the events I try to search out for because that's tons of seat time. It's not that road course mentality of looking further ahead and trying to come into a corner and having all this time to like really think about stuff and hitting the brakes and turning in slow. It's, it's busy. Your hands are constantly moving and you're just reacting to everything. The grip level's always changing because you'll have ice and then puff bunches of snow and, and from run to run even, you know, your second run, the, 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 there's not really a specific line you always take. You are just looking for that grip every single time you're out there driving requires all these senses you know you have to feel it you have to kind of hear it i mean everything it's it's a different driving style and it will teach you so much and that will carry over to all the other forms of driving